This is going to be the first video in a new series where I'm going to build out a game in Flutter. This game is going to be a 2D game, so I will be using the Flame Game Engine, which is a game engine built for Flutter. We're going to begin by adding Flame to our Flutter app with the uh, pub command here. So back over in our Visual Studio code, I have a new app here called Go Green, and that's gonna be the name of the game. Right now, this is just a very basic Flutter demo app that is generated by just running Flutter Create. We can add Flame now with Flutter Pub add Flame. Now we have access to Flame, and the next thing we're gonna do is actually create a game. So create a new file, and we'll just call this Go Green. And this is going to be our game, so we're gonna create a new class called go green and then this is going to extend a flame game we're going to right now just instantiate it with basically nothing just the children now that we have our game which of course nothing in it it's just a class we can change our app to run that game so back in main we can actually go ahead and just remove all of the my app code and then in run app here we're going to use the game widget and then we need to pass it a game and the game we're going to pass it we can actually define up here which is going to be of course just that go green that we just created so this game now we can pass into the game widget and we do need to import the game widget if we save this and rerun our app and we will have to completely rerun it both on the phone and on the web, you'll see we just have a plain black screen, but this is running a game. So our Go Green game, of course, has nothing in it. So let's go ahead and set a background color. And we can do this by overriding the background color, which is just a function within the flame game. And instead of returning the background color, we can return any color we want. So we can return green and we will need to import material. You can see now the screen has turned green and it's working on both web and on the mobile. Now let's add a simple ball to our game or a circle. And we can do this by creating another file and we can call this the, we can call this a player. For now, the player is just gonna be very simple. It's just gonna be a circle, but we are going to later make this something styled out. So first we're gonna create a new class and It'll be called the player and this is going to since right now it's just going to be a circle we can just use a circle component and we'll need to import the component from flame so our player now is going to have a few properties the first one is going to be its position which will be required and the position here will just be the location on the screen that we want it to be positioned the next thing since it is a circle we're going to allow you to set the radius and that will just determine basically the size of the circle. And we can also have an optional parameter here for the color. And if it's not set, then we'll just make it white. And we will also have to import material here. Now we need to basically tell our circle component to use these values when we are creating a new player instance. So we can do that with super. And then we just need to set these parameters so for the anchor, we can just set that to center, but you can see there are several different values you can use here. If you hover over this, you can read a little bit more about what the anchor is gonna be doing. But for instance, a player that you're adding at zero, zero, do you want the anchor to be in the center and then have the circle be made around it? Or do you want the anchor to be kind of at the top of the circle and then have the circle be made below it? So we'll just leave that at center for now. Next, we can add that radius, which will be the radius that we pass in. And last, we can set the color using the paint property. And for this, we will have to create an instance of paint. And then on that instance, we can set the color equal to that color that we pass in. We're also going to set the style on that paint to just be the paint style of fill so that the circle component is actually filled with the color. So this is good, we have our circle component and now we can add this to our screen by going back into our actual flame game, which is called Go Green. To add the player, we can override the on load. And within the on load here, we're going to have access to the world. And the world is essentially just the whole game itself. So the game world. And we're going to add to it a component and the component is gonna be that player. Now you'll see this is grayed out because we are returning super onload. We don't need to return it. We can just call it and then 
we can add this to the world. But of course, there are a few properties we need to add to this. We also need to import it. So the player, if you remember, has those required properties, which are position and radius. Position, it will be essentially a coordinate, so an XY coordinate. And by default, the game's 0, 0 is going to be in the center. So the center of the screen here is going to be 0, 0. And that is fine. We can set our first player to be a vector 2 of position 0, 0. And then for the radius, we can just give this a radius of 50. And if we save this, when we make updates to the actual game itself, we do have to rerun the app. It's not going to work with hot reload, unfortunately. So if we rerun this on the iPhone 15, you'll see now we get that nice circle there. And since we didn't set the color, it is going to be just white. And on web, it also is going to be showing up. I'm going to add another circle here, which is going to have a different color. And we'll make this one blue, and we'll also make this one a little bit smaller. Currently, it is set at the same position. So actually, if we rerun this, you're going to see it is placed on top of the white one. So to change this position, we can just change this value right here, which would be essentially the Y value to 100. And if we rerun this now, you'll see the blue dot is now below the white dot. So this is good. We now have these two players loaded up and the game isn't really doing anything yet. But what I want to focus on for the rest of this video is actually just the way that the game is going to be played. So this is going to depend on the type of game you make, but the game I'm going to be making is going to be optimized for the phone. It's going to be kind of an endless runner game where the screen is going to be moving vertically, but it's not going to move horizontally. And I do want to keep that, that width of the screen to be kind of fixed. And then basically things are going to be moving by up and down. Now, when you're on web, it gets a little bit different because of course the screen size can change. So I don't want the screen size to be this big on web. I want it to be kind of fixed to be the mobile equivalent. So I'm going to show you how to make a fixed screen size that the game will be contained in. And then no matter where you run it, it's always going to have kind of that same aspect ratio. So the first thing we're going to do for this is actually just add a new file. And this is going to be called the game app. And this is going to be a stateful widget. which is going to actually return the game itself. First, we're going to create a new material app. And then for its home parameter, we're going to give it a scaffold. And the scaffold is not going to have an app bar. It's just going to have a body right now, which we can actually set to the current game. So right here in main, we're calling this game. So instead of calling it here, we're going to call it in our game app. So we're going to do this within our init state. So Within a knit state, we can define that game. First, define this variable as well as a late variable. So now on our init state, we're going to have the game defined. And then within the body here, we can do what we were doing in main, which is calling this game widget and passing in the game. So we will, for right now, set that as the body and then get the game widget there. So this is good. Now we can use our game app in main here. So instead of calling the game, we will just call the game app, which is what we just created. And we can remove these imports as well. So now if we rerun this, you'll see the only thing that changes is we get that debug banner here, because now we are running our game through a material app. So the game app here, again, is just going to be this stateful widget, which is a material app with a body of the game widget. But this is useful later because if we want to add navigation or other stuff, we can have all the benefits of a material app, but then also all the benefits of our game widget, which is our flame game. So first we can get rid of that debug banner. And next we're going to wrap our game widget in a sized box. And then we can set on here the width and the height, which we're actually going to set these as constant values. So let's create a new file called constants. And within here, we can just define our game width and our game height. The width is going to be 1080 and the height is going to be 1920. This is basically the HD version of a nine by 16 aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio of an iPhone 15 or most modern iPhones are not actually nine by 16, but once we use the safe area 
by cutting off the basically the top and the bottom here it is closer to 9 by 16. it isn't exactly 9 by 16 so if you want to change your game height and width you can do that so anyway for the width we're going to use that game width and then for the height we are going to use that game height so if we rerun this you'll see nothing really changes here so there's kind of two reasons for that first we don't have the safe area turned on and we do want to do that because we don't want our game to be up in this area here so we can wrap our size box in a safe area. And now if we save that, you can see the game is in the safe area, but the size box is really not being respected here because it's kind of still filling the entire screen that is our safe area. So to fix that, we can just wrap the size box in a fitted box. And what that's going to do is actually use the defined width and height. You'll notice that the space down here increased a little bit, and that's because the height of this screen is just slightly more than the height that we have defined in our constant, so it's not quite 1920, but that's okay. And to make this look just slightly better, we can wrap the fitted box in a center, and now it kind of distributes that extra space above and below. The important thing that we wanna look at now is our web version, which is going to now resemble what a iPhone would look like. Of course, we can change the theme background. If we wanted to set it to yellow, we can do that by using the theme data and then setting that scaffold background. And that is useful because you can set an image back here or some other color or whatever you like. And you'll also notice that the two circles here got a bit smaller. And that is because now our green area here is essentially acting as though it is these dimensions. So what that means is the width of this green here is essentially treated as 1080. So to demonstrate how this is kind of useful, if we take that radius of our, our first player right here and we use the game width, we can divide it by four. And dividing it by four should fill up half of our screen with this ball. So if we reload that, you'll see kind of half the screen is being taken up. If we also set the position of this to be a negative game width divided by four, then it will move the, the player over to the left here. And then we could kind of do the same thing down with the other one. If we change these values, we kind of now know what to base things off of in our game. So if we want to position things next to each other, we can use the game width to our advantage and set things specifically based on the width of our screen. And this is going to work again on both devices. So all of this is basically just a way to use this set width, this fixed width, to our advantage. So we know that the game width is fixed. So if we want something to take up half the width, since we are using the radius here, that's why we're dividing by four because half of the radius is going to be a quarter and then that would be half the screen and then that's you know three quarters and then the full the full width of the screen if we were to use a game width divided by two for the radius you're going to see that this is overflowing the game and on ios that looks fine but if we do reload our chrome window you're going to see it does overflow so this is pretty simple to fix, but we just need to set our camera component in our game to be a fixed resolution. Right here within our Go Green app, we're going to remove this part, and then we're gonna set the camera here using Super. So we're going to use the camera component and then call with fixed resolution. And this is going to allow us to give the width and the height so we can give it the game width and the game height. And if we do that and rerun it, of course the iOS one looks the same, but if we go back into the web version, it's now going to clip that off because our green area here that is our game is actually also the camera view, so there's nothing that's going to overflow it. When looking at the game on our mobile device, there are two more small things that we actually want to update. Firstly is removing all of this information up here and making the game fully immersive and full screen. So in main here, before we run the game, we're going to make sure that the widgets footer binding ensure initialized is called, which just means that the app has started running. And then we're going to set the flame device to full screen. And we will have to import flame here. If we rerun this, you'll see those are removed. The other thing is what happens when the device is turned. So you can see the white is on the left and the blue is on the right. If we turn this, the game would actually, I guess, still work this way. You're just going to be playing in this middle centered screen. But really what we would prefer is for 
the phone not to turn this way and to actually just keep the game the same. To do that, you can add one more line, which is just to set the device to portrait. And we can do this with the flame device set portrait. And if we rerun this, you're going to see now that the white one is still on the left and the blue is on the right. And as we turn it, they basically stay exactly how they were. Turning the device is not going to have any impact on what is displayed on the screen. It's always going to be kind of displayed in this format. My plan is to build a game and submit it to this challenge and then on YouTube show you how I built the game. So if you're interested in learning more about Flutter game development with Flame, then go ahead and subscribe. <laughs>